Hello everyone, welcome to our Transmission Electron Microscopy Laboratory. Today I am going to talk about Transmission Electron Microscope. That is here what you are seeing is a 120 kV transmission electron microscope. In the transmission electron microscope, so we are using an electron beam to form the image. Because of the shorter wavelength nature of the electrons, you are getting a high resolution in this transmission electron microscope. For this purpose only, we are going to electron microscope. This part in this transmission electron microscope is a gun part. In this gun, we have cathode assembly and then anode is there. The here cathode is a filament, we are using lanthanum hexaborate and tungsten filament. By heating the filament, we are getting a bunches of electron. These electrons are oscillated from the gun part to the anode. Okay? So, from anode it has to pass through the column to the bottom of the uh, column. Okay? So, for that this uh, electron should be uh, oscillated with a high speed. Uh, because the electrons are pausing through the column, the column is under very high vacuum. Otherwise, it will it will interact with the air molecule, there should be a scattering effect to avoid that the whole column is under high ultra high vacuum. So, from this here the top is cathode assembly is there, the bottom is an anode. From this part to here, we have lenses are there. The lenses are electromagnetic lenses. So, by applying a current, you can change the strength of the electromagnetic field. By ch changing the strength of the electromagnetic lenses, you can form the image and ma magnify the image. Okay? So, in this particular CM12 transmission electron microscope, they have introduced four illumination lenses. That is condenser 1, condenser 2, mini condenser and condenser objective lens. Then from here to here all image formation lenses and magnification lenses are there. So, from this part we have an objective lens and then intermediate lens and diffraction lens. These three will form the image as well as the diffraction. Whenever the electron beam hit the specimen you will get so many signals. Some of the electrons will pass through the specimen, some of them will get scattered to a particular direction when it satisfies the Bragg condition. So, that is called electron diffraction. This will come from here to here by using this intermediate and diffraction lenses, this image and diffraction is forming in different planes. That is always the diffraction is forming in the back focal plane of the objective lens and then image is forming in the different plane. So, if you want to project the diffraction pattern, you have to project the back focal plane of the objective lens by using a projector 1 and 2 lenses. Okay? If you want to see the image plane, you have to project the image plane and then you will get the image in the bottom. So, here what you are seeing is a screen, this is a fluorescent screen. If you see this, there is a disc in that, that, that is a fluorescent screen. So, you cannot able to see the electron image with your I. So, for that this electron should hit the fluorescent screen immediately it will glow then you will see the image details. Okay? So, from this we can capture the image which is here we have a CCD camera with this. So, that image you can see in the monitor. Apart from this magnetic lenses the electron beam should pass through different apertures some of them are fixed aperture some of them are changeable aperture you can mechanically change the aperture. So, here this part is a condenser aperture part. You can change the size of the condenser aperture by using this condenser aperture you can reduce the beam diameter. Okay? But then this is an objective aperture nothing but we used to call this as a contrast aperture. We used to change the contrast of the images. This is called selected area diffraction aperture. By using this you select the area of the uh, specimen and then you can get the diffraction of this particular sp specimen. So, by using this transmission electron microscope you can get a structural information, crystallographic information as well as the chemical information. Okay? The chemical information you can achieve by energy dispersive x-ray analyzer. 
okay. By using a characteristic X-ray energy, you can detect the elements present in that. How you are getting is when the electrons hit the specimen, the X-rays will come out from the specimen, okay. There is each element has a characteristic X-ray energy that can be detected by silicon lithium detector. So, silicon lithium is a single crystal silicon on that lithium is doped. Lithium is a very light element, so it will be very mobile in nature. To hold it in the silica crystal, it should be cooled with uh, liquid nitrogen temperature. Okay? So, from this, this is a very important point in the transmission electron microscope. The electron beam should oscillate heated by with the filament, the electrons will bunches of electrons will come out and then it has to come through the lenses through this aperture and then it has to pass through the specimen. Okay? The beam should pass through the specimen, this portion is the specimen inserting portion, this part is called a goniometer. So, if you see this, this is a specimen holder. Because the electrons is passing through the specimen, your specimen thickness is very, very, very important. You have to use a ultra thin specimen. Okay? So, for that different methods are there to prepare the specimen. So, your specimen should not exceed 100 to 150 nanometer thickness. Otherwise, the electron will stop here itself. Okay? To avoid that, you have to make this specimen to 100 to 150 nanometer thickness uh, by different methods. For a conductive material, we have to go for electrolysis method and then for non-conductive material, we used to go for uh, iron milling by ionization process, we will thin the specimen. For your powder sample, we used to disperse the powder in on this grid that is called carbon coated copper grids. Okay. So, this whole instrument because we are using an electromagnetic lenses, the whole is uh, get heated up. To avoid the heating up, it will be circulated with 120 degree chilled water, we have a chiller in that. Okay. So, this here I told this whole system is under high vacuum. Now, I am going to show you the control uh, controls of this transmission electron microscope. See here the knobs are there. This knob is a intensity knob, you can converge and diverge the beam, electron beam. Okay? These two knobs are for tilting the specimen in both the direction by goniometer tilts as well as the holder tilt. So, this is the specimen holder for uh, transmission electron microscope. What you are seeing is a single tilt low background holder, this is a double tilt holder. So, by using this holder, you can rotate the specimen, but that is a goniometer rotation and then you can tilt the specimen in the z axis direction. Okay. The tilting of the specimen angle is shown here. This is a heating holder. By using this holder, you can heat the specimen inside the microscope. You can continuously observe what is the heat treatment effect in this. This is a straining holder. You can give this, uh, you can strain the sample inside the microscope, okay. While observa observing, you can strain the sample and see the effect of that straining. So, if we have two screws are there, you, you loosen the screw and then you have to put the specimen here and then you can proceed the experiment. This is a multiple specimen holder. By using this holder, you can load the specimen, three specimen uh, together and then you can view the specimen one by one. This is a single tilt holder which I have loaded a aluminum foil. See here, you can see the specimen in this. Here, the goniometer is there. So, I am going to insert the specimen. So, because I disturbed the vacuum here chamber. So, now it is evacuating the specimen chamber. This chamber is a specimen chamber. If you observe it, so it is now the pump is running. So, so now it got evacuated. I am inserting the specimen holder inside the microscope. These all are the controls here. See, this is the layout of a vacuum system. We have a rotary pump, oil diffusion pump and gatrayon pump. Okay? All are microprocessor controlled. Everything is isolated with pneumatic valves. The pneumatic valves, we are using a air compressor to control this pneumatic valves. Okay? If you see this, this, this portion is a control panel. Okay? So, you go here and then you see this, this is a high tension knob, whenever you want to work in the microscope, you have to switch on the high tension. So, the selection of high tension is very, very important, it depends on your specimen. 
So, in here in, in, in this 120 kV is the maximum voltage you can use it that is an oscillating voltage. So, that depends on the kV what you are using your resolution is determined. Okay. Then this part I have already selected a uh, 120 kV then what you have to do you have to heat the filament. So, thermionic emission. Okay. So, what I am doing is I am heating the filament you see there is uh, just I am heating the filament you have to wait for uh, till it uh, get a maximum electrons. Okay. Then from here you see here so many knobs are there. So, this is for magnification knob you can in this at CM12 uh, microscope you can go to 8 lakhs 20,000 magnification. So, this is a diffraction knob when you want to project a diffraction pattern from that uh, back focal plane you switch on you just press this you will come to the diffraction mode. These two are uh, beam shifting x y direction you can shift the beam from the x y direction. Then this knob is a focusing knob this is a step size this is a fine focus. You, have, you can change the course for course and fine you can make it. So, this portion is called a multifunction knob. This can be used for different purpose. If you have an stigmatism prob, uh, problem, you press this button, stigmatism button, and then you can adjust with this, you can adjust the stigmatism correction. So, this is called a dark field image. That I will uh, show you in the monitor how the dark field image is coming. Though, by pressing this, you can tilt your gun slightly to the diffracted beam. Okay. This is called an alignment because you have a very linear column you have to align the beam for that different alignment procedures are there starting with gun and then after that column and then everything from, from here to here so many lenses you can adjust the current and then you can align it and make a proper beam should hit your specimen. I have already heated the filament so the electrons are coming out from the filament by heating the filament that is oscillated by high, uh, high tension 120 kV, then it will come towards the anode. Okay. Here all the uh, lenses are um, uh, positively charged, so the attraction is towards the lenses and then you are seeing the image here. Now, in this now already I have loaded an aluminum foil, I am just going to show this aluminum foil, the image is uh, from the aluminum foil, you are seeing the images on the fluorescent screen then that will be seen in the monitor. This is a objective aperture, nothing but we used to call this as a contrast aperture. What you are seeing this image is without aperture. When I insert the aperture, you, you will see the difference, see the contrast difference in this, what you are seeing is a image of your aluminum foil. Okay. Then with this unit, you can get the crystallographic information. This is the selected area diffraction aperture. So, if we insert this aperture, you can select the area from the image. I have reduced the aperture size, then again you can go to still lower aperture. Okay. So, the purpose of this aperture is you can select the area and go for diffraction. This is the diffraction knob. If you press this, selected area will give a diffraction pattern. This is a diffraction pattern from the selected area. When you select the transmitted beam to form the image that we used to call as a bright field image. To form the image that is called dark field image. I am using the transmitted beam to form the image. This is called bright field image. This is slightly out. I am using the focusing knob to focus the beam. Nothing but I am uh, adjusting the objective lens current see uh, by using this translatory control now I am moving to the moving in the y direction the other side control is for x direction this area is darker some of this area is lighter so when the electron beam passing through the specimen some of them will get scattered nothing but get diffracted so those areas are um, less electrons hit that hit on that place, here more electrons are hitting on the specimen. Okay. Because of that it is looks darker, this is brighter in color. Okay. So, this is why this if you take a diffraction from this area, you will get a exact 
orientation so this is in one orientation this is in another orientation now i am I, again coming to the diffraction mode so the previous one one uh, the image is formed by the transmitted beam so by using an uh, objective aperture i am going to select this beam okay so so now i am going to select any one diffracted spot if you see this image some areas are getting highlighted this is darker in color okay so what is happening is these areas are correspond to that particular plane particular diffraction pattern okay this will represent the particular diffraction spot okay so if you have any defect or anything so you can find out the particular plane where the defect is there by indexing the diffraction spot okay this image is called dark field image okay when you use the diffracted spot to form the image that is called dark field image if you use a transmitted uh, beam to form the image that is called bright field image this is uh, some collection of x rays are here this correspond to energy versus intensity okay so what i am going to do is i am going to find out the elements what is that element see it belongs to aluminum so i am going to do this aluminum okay it's a com commercially pure aluminum and then some copper in this this is a copper peak 8 point so copper peak is there so you add it okay so so we see here now we can see this is raising up you have to give some time for the collection okay okay and then i am going to stop it and then you quantitatively both the thing you can do it here so i am going to quantification i am going going to the quantification of this elements present now you see this this is a weight percentage and then atomic percentage both are you are getting from this edx analysis energy dispersive x-ray analysis this unit is a 200 kv technai unit okay this is also a transmission electron microscope working in 200 kv that is the only difference uh, uh, from the cm12 so because you using a 200 kV as an oscillating voltage your resolution is more higher okay because of the higher voltage you are getting a shorter wavelength and then the resolution is uh, uh, very short that is 0.2 nanometer level you can resolve the specimen okay so the same working principle is same here same uh, electron gun is there the emitter is l l lanthanum hexaborate then by heating the filament uh, you will get an electrons that will be oscillated by a uh, high kv 200 kv then there is an anode then through that the electrons are passing through uh, different lenses all lenses are electromagnetic lenses apart from that the same type of uh, condenser aperture objective aperture and then selected air diffraction aperture all this thing uh, electron beam is passing through these apertures so this portion is a uh, uh, specimen uh, chamber same single tilt holder I have loaded here. So, the electron beam should pass through the specimen and then view, you will view the specimen in the fluorescent screen. Okay. So, the same way there is a CCD camera is there you will capture the image in the CCD camera and then you can see this uh, in the uh, monitor. Okay. Some controls are different here I will just want to show you uh, that. So, here the left side control panel is for this there is a knob this is a for a controlling the intensity and then there is a stigmator control, control is there there is a multifunction knob that is as in cm12 we can uh, do this stigmatism correction and then you can shift the beam everything you can done with this and then there is a track ball by using this you can move the inter intensity of the beam x x y direction there is a tilt control that is by tilting in this is a goniometer tilt condition uh, uh, 
knob, this is a holder tilt knob. So, these things are optional, you, you can select L1, L2, L3, L1 is for clean lift, L2 is reset focus and then L3 is spot size, reducing the spot size that is. So, these all are, this is an optional, by clicking it you can select whatever you want in this, okay. You see here, all these things are intensity, zoom, all these things are there, you can select whatever you want this. This is, is a multifunction x direction, then if you want to increase the magnification, you have to use this knob to increase the magnification. The same way, coarse and fine uh, focusing knob and then we, when you press this, it will go to the dark field imaging. If you want to go to the diffraction, you can press this knob, all this wobbler and eucentric focus is there. So, uh, for uh, while tilting, your uh, area of interest should not go out of the optical axis. For that, you have to do the eccentric correction. For this, we are using these two knobs. This one is also optional, R1, R2, R3. You can select according to that. So, R1 is for screen dim we have selected, R2 is for alpha wobbler, R3 is for spot size. That is, beam diameter reducing, you can go to uh, spot 1, 2 like that increasing order. So, increasing the diameter, you have to go to the reducing order. This is a vacuum layout of this microscope, there is a rotary pump uh, and then IGP pump, two pumps, two IGPs are there because it is a very big column and then we have a oil diffusion pump is there. So, this is 10 power minus 7 to 8 R you can achieve from this thing. After getting the vacuum status, you will see the values, numerical values here. We know it should come to gun, uh, should come near, nearly 23. Then we have already selected high tension to 200 kV. This is the 200 kV electron microscope. So, in 200 kV only you will get a maximum resolution. Then after that, I have to heat the filament, just pressing this knob. Now, the filament is getting heated up, okay. You have to wait for some time, there is the, they, we have already given some time delay. So, it is getting heated up, okay. There, here if you see this, there, this is the magnification, in, at present I am in 250000 magnification. There is a spot size, all these data are given here. You can, by using this knob, you can change all these things, okay. We have to wait for some time to get the filament to heat. What you are seeing is the image of your specimen. So, this is the powder sample. See, I have uh, mentioned in CM12, there is a copper mesh on that there is a fine uh, th coating of a carbon film that is a few nanometer thickness. On the carbon film, we disperse the powder. If you see this, there is a dark lines are there that is the mesh uh, image, okay. That is a shadow of the mesh. So, in, in between you will see the squares, inside the square you are seeing something, some black black things are there, no? That is your specimen. Say, this is a joystick you can move the specimen from x, y direction, okay. By using the joystick, you select the specimen place, okay. So, by see, by moving this x direction, y direction, like this you can move all the in all direction, okay. This is a joystick. See, now I am selecting this area, okay, right. So, what I am going to do is, see I have selected, but see this, by moving this here, and then here, everywhere, wherever you want, you select uh, by using this joystick, okay. The whole screen you can move like this, like this, okay, right. Now, by using this L1 button, I am lifting the screen, then you will see the image here. This is a CNT powder, carbon nanotubes powder. So, what you have to do, you know, you have to select any one particle by increasing the magnification. You see, I am increasing continuously, continuously like this. Then, in this position, you have to insert this aperture, objective aperture to get a better contrast. Okay. Then, you further increases, you select any one fiber and you will see the difference. That is what I am going to do is, by using this now, increase, increase further, increase further. This is the Na carbon nanotube, the distance is 200 nanometers. This is a magnification of this carbon nanotubes. I have increased it and focused it. I got this, you see here. Then I will go for further magnification, okay. See here, further resolution, nothing but further re resolution. You will, this distance is 200 nanometer. You will see the increase in the resolution. This is 50 nanometer, 
okay, you will see this, this is the carbon nanotube and then when I am going further to that, you will see that. this is a fine nanometer image. See here, this is a fine nanometer image. What you are seeing is a lattice fringes. Okay. So, if this is a carbon nanotube. So, the distance between these two line is 0.34 angstrom. So, in because we are using a 200 kV, because uh, the resolution is uh, high. That is, shorter the wavelength, higher the resolution. Okay. So, higher because of the higher voltage. So, this is a carbon lattice. Okay. Then if you, if you see further, see here, this is again it is in high, high uh, magnification, then again come down. So, this is slightly lower magnification, this is in 4, 490x kx, nothing but this distance is 10 nanometer. Okay. Then if you see here, you see this same 10 nanometer area, you can see this. Okay. See here, this is the lattice imaging. This is the advantage of this uh, 200 kV uh, transmission electron microscope. If, if you go to 300 kV, you can get even uh, in the order of 0 0.1 nanometer level. Even further uh, with the field emission gun, you can get to atomic resolution is possible. Okay. This I am showing is, this is again 7, uh, 700. See, again I am showing. Okay. See, this is same 700. I just want to show some of the photographs which I, we have already taken with different samples. Okay. Just I am going to show you this one. See here, it will, you will see this, this okay. because it is a, a, a two phase alloy sample. Okay. This is, wait a minute. You will see the lattice of this two, two lattices, so you can able to see it. Okay. Then if you go here, open. if you see this, this is the lattice imaging. Okay. So, in this by using this, we have a FFT facility in this, this is called an FFT facility. Go to live FF, FFT. So, you have to select any one area by putting an alt and this you have to select this square and then select the area like this okay sorry it is not clear okay then go to process when you go to live effect fft you will get something here it is almost identical your uh, diffraction pattern okay so this distance you can easily find out even if you if you move this you will see the difference in the diffraction pattern this is you see here it is in uh, two phases are there. If you zoom it, you will see two uh, two spots will be there here. So if you go here, also you can see this. Okay. So if you go to this, go to F of T. Okay. Then go to inverse. See see the dif distance between these two lines. Okay. There is a fine lines. So when we have a profile is there. Okay. So when you measure from this to this line okay you are getting a graph of this then you will see the uh, spacing of this uh, each line the, the small lines are there no so you will see the spacing of these lines so you can do like this you can find out so it should be see here you have to select properly otherwise you won't get the proper result so you have to select this see see this is see here from here to here. So, we are getting this, this is the value of your, uh, your prop, you have to select properly. This is your resolution of your uh, spacing, see here it is given here. Okay. So, from here to here, if you observe it here, but it is very fine. So, because, uh, because of that, we cannot able to find out, because till 2 nanometer only, we can easily resolve it, because it is lesser than that. It is a indium uh, uh, silver alloy something, they have, the one student brought it. So, this is the resolution you can find out by using this FFT uh, option. This is taken from our uh, microscope, this is a fine nanometer that is the maximum resolution you can get it, even lesser than 0.2 nanometer we are resolving here. This is the advantage of 200 kV electron microscope. 
if you go to 300 kV, even one angstrom resolution is possible. This is an energy dispersive X-ray analyzer. As per uh, in CM12, the same uh, configuration is there. We have a same silica lithium detector to detect the uh, X-rays that by using a characteristic X-ray energy. Energy we are we are detecting the elements. So the spectrum developed here is belongs to Ag, okay, silver, okay. So then apart from that, some of the elements are there here. We have to locate it. Ah, some copper is there here. See, copper is there. So we load it, okay. By using this, we can quantify it. The qualitatively as well as quantitatively, you can achieve the results by using a energy dispersive X-ray analyzer. So, you have to go for quantification, you will get these things. So, this presence of elements, element, uh, silver is there, copper is there, then you will uh, quantitatively you can add, uh, find out the elements present in the particular sample.